Patrick Dovigi is the founder and CEO of uh, GFL. He's with us now. Thanks for being with us. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Patrick, I think uh, the place everybody wants to start with you is just to, to really find out how the pandemic and the lockdown has affected your business. Where did you see it show up? Yes, I mean, through the first quarter, uh, you know, we actually exceeded expectations um, in the analyst consensus numbers through March. I think, you know, we opted to share some uh, light on what, what we saw through the month of April. And I think what we saw through the month of April was, you know, what you'd expect. Um, residential volumes trended higher to the tune of almost 10 percent. Um, and commercial volumes, you know, company-wide were down almost 10 to 15 percent. So, uh, you know, widespread of, you know, shutdowns, and that varied by region and by market. Um, I think Canada was a little bit harder hit than the U.S. as we up in Canada acted much more quicker and, you know, much more stringent in terms of how we actually locked down um, the country versus the U.S., which was, you know, very widespread in terms of uh, their stay-at-home legislation. What's the split for you in terms of um, industrial or commercial clients uh, versus residential? Because I would I would expect residential to stay strong through a period like this, and then commercial industrial to be more of a mixed picture. Yeah, so uh, of our solid waste revenue, uh, you know, about uh, about twenty eight to twenty nine percent of it comes from the residential line, and about twenty five percent of it comes from the industrial commercial line. Hmm. And how did that show up? Did industrial commercial completely dry up in this quarter? No, I mean, through April, as, as we were saying, I think if you look, the commercial and industrial revenue is down um, in Canada about, you know, around 15 percent. And in the U.S. was down about 5 percent versus the comparative period in 2019. So it wasn't as bad as, um, you know, some had forecasted. Um, but And we've seen... Since the third week of April, um, you know, the decline has now reversed into an incline. And I think, you know, we're on the way out of it. It's just a question of how fast, um, you know, businesses get back open in certain markets and certain regions um, in Canada and the U.S. There are those who would point, um, Patrick, to negative cash flow and some debt uh, on your books as uh, kind of warning signs. What do you tell investors about that? Yeah, in terms of the debt, I mean, if you think about uh, if you think about our, our debt post IPO, the business levered at just over sort of four times debt to EBITDA, and if you look at the free cash flow profile of the business post um, the IPO, you know the company will generate. I mean, there's a lot of accounting noise and expenses that flow through the P and Ls in prior periods with all the private equity ownership, but if you look at the free cash flow profile of the business, um, you know the business will generate. Somewhere between sort of three hundred and fifty and four hundred million dollars of free cash flow for two thousand twenty. So a significant amount of free cash flow um, to continue funding sort of the business and our overall sort of growth plans. And on those growth plans, I mean, you're no stranger to acquisitions. It's how the business uh, really grew. Is that in the future? Will you see some real opportunities here? Yeah, like we've always said, you know, we'll never let a good crisis go to waste, and no different than when we founded the business closed our first major acquisition in September of 2008, um, which sort of reminds me of, of where we're sitting today. Um, you know, there was a lot of great opportunities that came out sort of three and six months post, you know, September 2008. It was really the foundation of, of how GFL got built over that period. And so when I looked at today, I said, you know, I think there's going to be some good opportunities um, that come out of this. And, um, you know, we've got, a, we got over $1.3 billion of liquidity now, um, to be able to execute on those opportunities. So we positioned ourselves uh, very favorably in order to uh, execute those opportunities as they come about over the next sort of uh, three to six months here. There is some uncertainty, of, obviously, about how uh, this coming recession unfolds, how long it is. What, what worries you most about what lies ahead? I think it's just the, it's the, the lack of clarity, um, and the different views, um, both in Canada and the U.S., I mean, you can go from east to west in Canada. Um, you know, it was easy to shut things down. It just feels like mm -hmm. people are struggling with actually how to reopen and how to reopen and what to do and what is required in order to reopen. Right. Um, and I still don't think anyone has, knows the full extent of 
you know, what the impact of the virus could be. I mean, we're seeing deaths, we're seeing other yeah. things, but no one really has the clarity yet. And I think that is, you know, it's right. always the fear of the unknown that, you know, creates paranoia. For sure. Um, and that's, I feel like, where we are today. All right. It's great to have you with us today, Patrick. We appreciate your time.